You're listening to SM Media, the home of exclusive West of Scotland Football League content. Hi folks and welcome to the latest episode of the SM Media West of Scotland Football Show. I'm Scott McPike, it's an absolute pleasure to be your host as always. I'm delighted to welcome this week's special guest. It is a pleasure to welcome on to the show the manager of the season in the uh, West of Scotland Third Division. It's a pleasure to welcome on the manager of Lark Hall Thistle, Brian Crawford. Brian, welcome to the show, it's a pleasure. Hi Scott, thanks for inviting us. No, it's pleasure an absolute pleasure. Home. Absolute pleasure. Uh, obviously, congratulations on winning. We're recording this just after the the awards have been, you know, the votes have been completed. So it's been a, it must be, it must be kind of a good recognition for you to to win that award after it's been a really good season so far. Scott, it's, it's one of the ones that you you've been nominated for for the award and you've won it. You're you're up against other managers who probably deserve to be involved as well. So just to win it, it's uh, it's great. It's it's great for the uh, people voting. And taking their time to do that, and fortunately, I came out on top. But it was a very close race, so unlucky to the others and commiserations. Yeah, it certainly was. It was obviously the the awards will be going kind of going up in the channel over the next couple of days. So stay tuned. We'll have a, we've got a lot of West awards to give out. So congratulations to everybody that's won as well. Everybody that's been nominated as well. Well done in terrific seasons. But as well, obviously, you need to you need to put the performance in to be kind of recognised in that regard. You are currently sitting third in the league after 31 games. We have said all, all season how tight the league is, particularly at the top. You are now in a really good chance, obviously, to, to be in the promotion hunt. There's still uh, five games left to play. How are you kind of feeling right now? It must be kind of nervous for, for the rest of the season. Big game tomorrow as well. Massive game tomorrow, Scott. Del Rai are still got a, a lot to play for mm-hmm. um, with regards to their position at the present time to stay in the league. So we know that this is this is going to be as tough a game as any game we've had this season. Um, but we're just taking everything game by game. We don't look too far ahead. Uh, we just take it every game by game. So we will move into talking about the action in the Premier Division. Uh, another very busy weekend as always, but this obviously we're getting to the, the real kind of end of the season stuff where safety and relegation... Title's been won, B, they're obviously champions. We'll talk about them a wee bit later on, but we'll start. What I thought, Brian, was the result of the weekend was Colwinning Rangers won, Largs Thistle now. Colwinning, they still have a lot to do to, to secure their safety, but a big one over Largs to, to make it. They're four points behind now. Arthur, they obviously uh, lost as well, so they do have a chance, but there's a massive game tomorrow night where they go away to Troon, but they need to do what they did on Saturday and win. Hundred percent. Um, I know Chris very well. I played with McClyde, and I know he'll be doing everything he can to keep them in the league. Um, to be honest, this season I was a bit surprised with their league position after their performance last season. So um, it's a huge game for them. Is they're a they're a very big club. So I I would expect them to go um, all out and try and get that, the three points that they really need. Yeah, I think that's I think that's fair as well. Obviously, like Arthur, they have one game left there away to Glen Afton in the last day, whereas Colwinning are away to Peters Hill. So realistically, Colwinning need to win the the last two games. So that the goal difference is going to work against them as well. With thirteen goals behind Arthur, so they will need to win those two games and hope Glen Afton can do them a favour. Oh, well, definitely. they it's kind of in their hands, um, as we put it, Scott, but. It, it's two tough games. Regardless, yeah. of Peter still already relegated. They'll still not want to get into that game and be defeated. Uh, they'll still want to win the last game of the season. So I think that it's, it's two massive games for Chris and um, he'll give it his best shot to keep them there. Yeah, absolutely. But, absolutely. Uh, one team that are safe who won at the weekend were Kirk and Tillett, Rob Roy. They won 3 1 at home to Canvas Lang. Brian, Rob Roy obviously started the season. Stuart had done a terrific job, obviously getting them kind of at the top of the league. I think I think they were close to the top of the league when when they moved on to Pollock. But to, they did have a bit of a tough run after that. Obviously, Kevin went in and 
he had to steady the ship. And just to get safety this season, I think, from the position they were in, is a remarkable achievement. Oh, the start of the season, they were unbelievable. Yeah. Um, I think that's the touch top of the league at one point, when Stuart was yeah. there. Um, right. And uh, people will be looking at them, expecting them to fall, expecting them to fall. Uh, one of the ones, some some people looking and think, oh, it's only a matter of time, but they were doing great. But, but he's went in there and he's, he's kind of stayed up. And so that's a success at the end of the day. Be looking to build on that for next season. Yeah, they certainly will. Obviously, big achievement for Rob Roy. One, another team that are in a, a really good position, obviously. Two games left of the season, but a good a good victory for them on Saturday was Clyde Bank. 6-2 home win over Glenafton. Doubles from Lee Gallagher and Nicky Little. It's been a really good season for Clyde Bank. Obviously, they're sitting in fourth, won one of the next two games, and they'll, they'll solidify fourth place. And it's, again, just been a really solid season for Clyde Bank, and it shows just how well Gordon's done. No, they've been superb this season. Um you see, or you see all the results at the weekend coming in, and they just seem to be one of the teams that are they're winning most weeks. Um, so it's been a great achievement. And again, but that'll be Gordon will be looking to build on that again next season. He'll he'll no want to rest in that, and he'll be looking to try and push near the top, uh, the top three to break in there and try and win the league. And obviously, like as well, another kind of big signing they've made as well. Callum Graham coming in for Irvin Meadow. That's a huge statement as well. To go and get a player like that to come in and bolster the attack for next season. It just shows you the ambition of the manager and the club that they yeah. can go and make signings like that. So you've got to take their hat off them for making that happen. Um, and that's when I was saying they'll be wanting to progress from fourth into the top three and try and win the league. So to get players like that in, it makes a statement. Yeah, it certainly does. Uh, another, obviously, the top two faced off champions, Bede went to Darvold. Josh Fowler with a hat trick and a 3 2 win for the champions, and they're now 11 points clear. And the trophy obviously has been lifted against Ockham Lake last week, and it just shows you as well. Josh Fowler, one of the main men for, for B this season, it's been a, a brilliant season for him. Oh, he's, he's been on fire this season. The funny thing is, Scott Josh works for the same company as me, right? Okay, so um, we're working, I work up in Edinburgh, he works in, in Glasgow, so we've not really crossed paths, but. Um, he's he's done superb, uh, and he'll, he'll want to kick on for that as well. He'll he'll want to kick on next season. Um, if he's still at Beath, he'll want to go and try and finish the top of the scoring charts again. Um, but with the what he showed this season, you never know what can happen in the summer. There could be interest in Scott uh, and Josh there. Sorry. Um, so he'll be want to do as well as he can himself. If that means moving moving to a higher level. Or, again, it'll be going to do the same again maybe next season. Yeah, absolutely as well. Obviously, the, the other side of that with Darvel as well, obviously, that Auckland Lake can still overtake them into second, but it's going to be all changes. We know, obviously, we're yet to, to find out who the manager's going to be next season. There's there's chat of different people, but it's going to be there's it's going to be a big rebuild at Darvel anyway because a lot of players, obviously, are potentially going to move on there's going to be a lot of change at that club and it's again it's a lot of uncertainty well it's one of them that Darville have been exceptional um, beating Aberdeen in the Scottish yeah. Cup and things like that they've been absolutely exceptional and as you say it's now change and it's how they react to the change um, it all goes down to what the club are going to do now uh, in terms of new management team and, and where they go from there Mm-hmm. So it was a bit of a surprise, to be fair, when Mick left. There was the odd rumbling that he was going to go, but to be honest, I didn't expect him to go. I thought he would have, would have stayed, but uh, good luck to him when he's at East Kilbride. But mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a big job for Darvel to replace. Yeah, absolutely. And as well, obviously, Auckland Lake won 3 1, 3 1 away to Irvine Meadow on Saturday, Boyle and Samson and Taylor with the goals. It's shaping up with the race for second day. Auckland Lake played Darvel. In the final day at Recreation Park. It's going to be quite a nice contest, actually. Both sides just looking to get second place. Obviously, Auckland Lake can overtake Darvo if they beat Hurlford tomorrow night. But there could be a point in it, and it could be very exciting in the last day. That's what you want, Scott, in football. You want excitement. You want these kind of games, the final games of the season. Um, but they'll be both, both teams will be all out to make sure that they finish second. One will want to drop, one will know what to drop down, and obviously, Auckland Lake will be trying to get the third, the second place and move up for third. But fair, is it fair play to be in that? Because I think everybody 
um, at the start of the season, I probably said it was between Ock and Lake and Darvel. Yeah. And Beath have went and showed that they can they can go in there and mix it with the two big boys, if this, if you want to put it like that. And they've done superb and they deserve their trophy. They certainly do. Yeah. Come not one three now away to Trun as well. Come not. Again, a kind of similar to Rob Roy, like they had a, a really good start and then it kind of fell off a wee bit. But to, they're, again, they're sitting in eighth place, just mid table. A lot of teams kind of in a similar boat, just had to just stay in the league and they'll just hope to, to go and improve next season. They're another team that did well in the Scottish Cup as well. Brian did well down it, getting they got a home tie. Uh, they were unfortunate in that home tie in the Scottish Cup, I thought, uh, against Dumbarton. Yeah. Um, um, but they've done well again. They've done well this season. Uh, I've watched them a couple of times, and I uh, quite like they play good football. I uh, quite like the way they play. Yeah, absolutely. And as well, obviously, they've got the they'll play Rutherglen in the Junior Cup final. That'll be be something to look forward to as well at the end of the month. And the final mm-hmm. result, Hurlford, uh, they move into sixth place. They won three one away to Arthurley. Uh, Josh Jack, Calvin Kemp, and Walker with the goals. And Hurlford was talking about Darren a lot. Just night, just a steady season. Just really, really impressive. Darren's been there for years now. Um, yeah. And I think you know that Hurlford are always going to be difficult to beat. Mm. Um, and they'll always be there or thereabouts. It's just Darren, I think, he's, he, as a player, his mentality was a winner. And I think he'll just be the exact same as a manager. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, excellent season so far for Darrow. Obviously, the final weekend of the Premier Division will be next weekend. We'll talk about that next week. Uh, first division, big big news coming out of St Caddox was the dismissal of John Doyle. Obviously, St Caddox drew 3-3 on Friday night with Nielsen. I am very surprised at this, and I don't know what's went on behind the, behind the scenes, if there has been anything went on behind the scenes, but to dismiss a manager, if that's what's happened, this close, to, when you're in a promotion challenge like they are, if they've dismissed John, it's a dangerous gamble, especially when you're going for promotion. There's only a few games left in the season, and he's it's not he's still bang there. It's, it's, it was a surprise. It was, um, it was a huge surprise. A, a massive surprise when I seen that yesterday. Um, I, and I don't know. I, I don't know if the St. Caddox have got another way of thinking, or but John's got them there. They're they're, they're there. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of getting over the line. So to. To make that change is, is very, very surprising. I think as well, obviously, like wh- when you're when you're so close to the end of the season and like I'm just I'm very surprised. He, I'm you kind of looking at what's been said and things like that. I, whether it's been a, a personal decision on the manager's part or whether it's been a club decision, I just think it right now it could do more harm than good to a side because you when you're Obviously, I know there'll be a caretaker coming in, and I think as well, obviously, there'll be a bit of continuity just for the time being with, with Barry staying as well. So there will be that level of continuity, but it can influence a dressing room as well when the manager's gone that close to the end of the season. I, I can work, I think it can work both ways in certain in certain terms. The fact that they, they're there, they've been there all season together as a unit, and then the manager's away, that sometimes could have an adverse effect, whereas yeah. you know, the other effect is sometimes when a team's down near the relegation and they change their manager, the team gets a wee, a wee spur, a boost, and you can see the results changing. So it's one of the decisions. We don't know how it's going to go until the games are played now because you don't know how, what the reaction's going to be like. Yeah, absolutely. It's good. Obviously, best wishes to John. I'm sure if, if he's wanting another job, he'll get one. No problem as a terrific manager. Gart Cairn are top of the table as well. They're now three points ahead of Ben Burb. They won 2 0 away to Thornywood. They're in a really good position now. Obviously, they've got the games in hand over Ben Burb. And basically, again, I think two wins would probably take them over the line. They've done superb. Gart okay. Cairn, uh, they've done superb. Uh, Mick's done a great job in there. And they've been sitting second, third. And then they've got to that stage, finally got to the top. Um, and I think they'll stay there. That's my opinion. I think they'll stay there. I think they'll go and win it. Yeah. Um, I just they just seem to be playing really good football and getting really good results. And that comes through the full season. So I, I think that they'll go and I think they'll go and clinch that. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, they're they're obviously in a good position. Our team that's in a good position as well. Ben Bard, they won five three away at St Rocks. Very very entertaining game. 
And Ben Bird as well for the, again, we spoke about this a lot. They had a really difficult start and to get to where they are now, they're, they're in a really good place. They probably, it's going to come down, obviously, Drum Chapel can, can get close to them. It's basically, I now think it's going to be between four teams and I think Ben Bird are probably in the best position outside of Gart Cairn to, to get there. Well, we we were fortunate. Well, I'm saying fortunate. We were fortunate. I think then that we got them at the start of the season in the Scottish Cup, mm-hmm. um, which we 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 won three one at home. But since then, Paul's Paul's got the rally the troops and he's he's done superb um, because they were down in the bottom four or five when we played them. Yeah. Uh, and but now they're he's they got them in a run and they're they're definitely they're there and it's it's up to them now if they want to. Want to go up? They just need to keep getting the results, and I, I think they'll they'll be very. I think they'll be there. Yeah, and obviously as well, uh, Ben Bob are away to Cumbernauld, and then away to Coburnley and at home to Gartcairn in the last three games. So, one one two of them, they'll probably be okay. Edrum uh, Chapel, they had a good result. They won five 0 at home to Johnson Borough. Uh, Joe Victoria with a double. Edrum Chapel, obviously, they've got the games to to make up. They're going to have a busy end to the to the month. Uh, go to Gart Cairn tomorrow night, which is going to be very, very interesting as well. So that could shape up to be a huge game for for Drum Drum Chapel. Was Drum Chapel need to win that probably to to give them to put themselves in a good position? Yeah, of course. It, it's some I know they've got the games in hand, but sometimes it's better to have the points, mm-hmm. as they say. Um, again, we played them in in the cup earlier on this season, uh, and they beat a seven one Scott, and they, they were they were terrific when we played them. Yeah. Absolutely terrific. And they were probably one of the ones that you thought were going to be challenging for the league anyway at the start of the season. And again, they're, they're, in, a, they're in a position where, again, it's down to themselves. They, they go and win their games and that would get them there. So, aye, it's, it's a great, it's a good running in that league, the, the top four there and three for four. So it's going to be, it's quite, it's quite good to see the bit yeah. of excitement into the last day. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Blantyre won 4 0 at home to Colburnley. Uh, Blantyre, obviously, that puts them in eighth. They're probably safe now, I would say. Uh, it's going to be very tight down the bottom of the table, but I'd say that's them probably secure. Colburnley, obviously, there's been a lot of managerial change over the past uh, 18 months. And another one, Sean Dillon's obviously leaving due to work commitments. And it's going to be another change at Colburnley. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen Sean at. at posted that he was leaving duty commitments to work. Um, again, Coburnley were up there early on in the season, yeah. um, doing really well. So you just hope that, for their sake, that they get the right man in and they can steady that. Um, and he gets a run and he gets, there's plenty of time there to go and, go and uh, change it next season and go and challenge. But um, I, you know, I don't like a, a lot of the management changes as many, as many times due to one reason or another. Mm. But it's just, I think they just need to get someone in now and, and just go for, move forward. Yeah, there needs to be a bit of a, you know, state stability in there, obviously, going into yeah. to next season because there'll be a lot of pressure in, at that club. Big one for Rutherglen, they won 3 1 at home to Rossvale, all but probably relegates Rossvale, I would say. They would need to win the, the, next, the last three games to have any chance of staying up. I'd say it's going to be very difficult. But Rutherglen gives them a solid ch- chance to stay up now. They're on 32 points, three points clear of the drop, five games left to play. Rutherglen should be fine, I would say. They've got a big game tomorrow night as well against Shots. Then they go to Bonneton and they've got a double bill against Blantyre. So they will probably, if they win at least a couple of them, they should be fine. Right. Um, again, I was surprised that Rutherglen being down that end of the table this season, I thought they'd have been a top half team. Mm-hmm. Um, but they've done superb in getting to the, the final of the Scottish. Obviously, they beat us in the quarters. Yeah. So um, sometimes that takes the eye off the league a wee bit because of the cup run. So maybe be, they're now in the final, so they they may go and pick up the points they need in the league now. Yeah, absolutely. Final game. Well, it's one shots, one two sides that are just obviously trying to to get as many points on the board as possible and hopefully luck is on their side for them to stay up. We'll move into the second division. Renfrew sealed promotion with a 1-1 draw away to Colsyth Rangers and congratulations are in order to Jimmy and his side. A terrific season. They've been the best team in that that league. It's one of the teams I haven't seen this season, Scott, but by all accounts, really speaking to others, that they've been very impressive in there. Yeah. So uh, it's quite rightly deserved then if... Uh, on reports, so uh, well done to them. 
Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, they're going to be in a good position for next season as well, and I do think they will be challenging in that league next season. Uh, Maybowl won 2 0 away to Ardair, goals from Graham and Patterson. And the way kind of results went, it's, it's gave them a, a good opportunity to, to get promotion. Obviously, Glasgow Persia drew. They it kind of killed their chances of uh, going up. Uh, Craig Mark lost 3 0 away to Mary Hill. We'll touch on that in a wee second. But Maybowl, huge win going to Ardair, which is never easy. No, no, it's, you, you, these games, especially in Ayrshire, that Ayrshire game, and these games are always tough going down, going down to Ayrshire and places. Um, and we played Maybo in the Scottish, and that was a very tough game, and they were a, they were a good side. Um, so I think they were sitting second in that league when we played them, and the, you could see they had a bit about them uh, as a unit. I definitely had a bit about them, so they've done well to stay up there, and good luck to them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ashfield drew 2-2 with Glasgow Perthshire. Uh, Ashfield, they have four games left of their season. Glasgow Perthshire only have one. Ashfield's four games are as follows. They will play Ardea. Uh, the, the two home games against Ardea in fourth. It could be a massive game between uh, Maybowl and Ar- uh, Ashfield in the 20th of May. And then Ashfield host Muirkirk. They're in a really good position, Ashfield, to, to clinch promotion. They'll be looking to try and win the games to secure the promotion. Again, I think Ashfield have done superb this season. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, probably wasn't one of the teams that I thought at the start of the season would have been challenging for the league. I thought they'd have been definitely mid-table, but I, I wasn't sure if they'd be one of the ones that would be up there. So, so well done to them. Superb achievement and, and good luck. And Just need to win their games, Scott, and they're there. Yeah, absolutely. Huge result as well for Mary Hill. They won 3 0 away to Craig Mark. What a result for Mary Hill. Craig Mark can I scuffle Craig Mark's chances of promotion a wee bit. They they will have to, to at least have seven points to make up in May Bowl, which won't be easy. But a huge win at the, the other end of the table for Mary Hill and it takes them out of the drop zone. Yeah, no, as I say, I've I've kind of been looking at the um the bottom end of that table as well and it's quite a, it's a tough tough bottom end, and mm-hmm. any any points at the probably the bottom five six in that league pick up is is really important because it's that tight down down that down there. So um, again, they just they'll need to try and win their next game again, try and go on a wee run mm-hmm. to try and keep themselves um, from getting relegated. Yeah, absolutely. Big one for Yoker. They won six 0 at home to Glasgow United. Muirkirk as well got a huge three points uh, three 0 at home to Wishaw. And Glasgow Uni won two one at home to fourth. Three big home that, wins. That they were big wins. That I was, um, I they're they're all. I was seeing the results on, on Saturday night, and it makes the bottom end of that table, as I say, the bottom six. I think that it's very tight in there. So they're every games, every games a cup final for them. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we'll move into the third division. We'll start obviously with Lark Call. 2 0 win over Royal Albert. Taylor Scott and Shanley with the goals. Uh, the way it's kind of worked out, obviously, Larnock didn't play. So, four points clear of Larnock playing the same amount of games. Arvin Vicks have a game to catch up. We'll get onto them in a couple of minutes. But big three points as well this week, uh, this weekend. Every, every win's a big one here. Every win's a cup. Every win's massive now. Yeah. Um, for, now, for now and every game. I say to the, guy, the lads every week. This is the biggest game of your season. Mm-hmm. This is the biggest game of your season. Week, game after game after game. I, they're probably fed up with me saying that, to be honest. But that's the stage of the season and the position we're in. That every game you go into, the next that game is the biggest game of their season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. What, was, what was the result? Obviously, beat like Endon Vale Clydron as well. How big was that for morale as well? Massive. Um, we played them earlier in the season and beat them 3-2, mm-hmm. but we knew that that was going to be a tough, tough game. Um, it was one of the games that, at that stage, it could have went either way. Yeah. The game could have went either way. Uh, and I said to the guys, you need to make sure you win this. If you win this, it gives you a real, real opportunity of promotion. So I said, you need to leave everything in, everything in the changing room and out in that park, you've got to basically you've got to sweat, blood, tears, and everything for each other. And I couldn't ask any more of them, Scott. To be honest, they, yeah. they were they were exceptional. But we did come under the the cosh for the last twenty minutes. It was um, 
they were Clyde flung everything at us. And well, obviously we defended it and we got the victory, which was a great result. So I think that I gave them a wee bit of belief again, a wee bit more belief that they could go and get promotion. So they just need to keep believing, but they just need to keep believing and keep working hard and um, take it game by game and don't get too carried away with, with, with any of the results that we get because you're only two games away from a disaster. Mm-hmm. And like obviously, like Cammy Smith and Taylor Scott, obviously making our team of the season. How big play? How big have, have those two players been for your for your side this season? Oh, they've been huge. Their, their goals have been their goals have been great for us. Um, but also, as I say, I, I don't single and single any players out. I say that mm-hmm. to the, the team. Uh, they they win as a team and they lose as a team. Mm-hmm. So everybody we've had this season. Uh, have played for us this season has been have all done their job and more. Um, but the goals are a big the goals are a big part of it, obviously, and they two have they two have really been superb this season in front of goal. Yeah, absolutely as well. Big one for a dross and they won one now away to Port Glasgow. Obviously keeps them top of the table. They've got a very big game coming up as well. Obviously they host Vela Clyde uh, next Saturday. And Vela Clyde obviously beat New Mains seven uh, one. James Simpson with a hat trick. It's going to be massive when, the, when you were watching. You'll have an, an ear to the the phone with that. And Saturday we are drawing and Vela Clyde going up against each other. I'll look at it after ninety minutes. <laughs> after ninety minutes during during that time, uh, nothing nothing else matters really. <laughs> to me, to be honest, um, as long as we take care of uh, our game, yeah. then whatever it is after that, that's. It is what it is, Scott. Yeah, there's nothing there's nothing you can do to influence any of the other results. So mm-hmm. we just take care of our own take care of our own game and then look at it after and you you never know what can happen. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Arvin Vicks bounced back obviously for for the defeat, the uh, five 0 defeat there on Wednesday from yourselves with a four two away win against East Bride Thistle. What were what was the kind of reaction to that? Obviously, Arvin Vicks have been in a really good run. Beating them five nothing, it was a it sent shockwave through the league. It really did, and to see them kind of bounce back, would you still say they're kind of in a chance of promotion as well? Definitely, hundred percent. Because you you've seen some of the results in recent weeks, Scott. Mm. Obviously, all season. To be honest, you've seen some of the results, and you wouldn't think, or you wouldn't think that, or oh, they'll win today, and they bother. They'll win. You don't know. You can get yeah. you get into games and. You don't know what the results are going to be at the end of the day, so uh, uh, they're still definitely still there, definitely still there. Um, and as you've seen this season, they've been very, very consistent, very consistent, Irvin. So I don't expect anything to change for them. I think um, they'll they'll bounce back for that. I'd heard that they hadn't scored goal three in three games, but they've bounced back after the defeat to us. So again, they'll they're still right there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, big result at the, the other end of the table for Kaluk. They won 5 1 at home to Solcoats. Uh, Solcoats, Royal Albert, and New Mains have all been uh, relegated. Uh, they'll go into fourth division next season. Kaluk, it might just be, be kind of too late for them to secure safety, but it's a huge three points. Oh, massive three points. When, when, you're, when you're in that position and you pick up three points, they're all huge at, that, at this stage in the season. Yeah. I think the only thing that's possibly going against could look is the amount of games they've played. Yeah. Whereas the teams round about them have got games in hand to them. So, um, But could look have had some great results this season. Yeah, uh, have. Again, just what we're talking about, um, you don't know some of the, the results that's going to come in at, when you fight at quarter to five at four on a, a Saturday. Mm-hmm. So, uh, again, I just think they're, I think they've just maybe... Too little, too late with the because of the games I've played. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're possibly right there as well. Uh, for that, one one nil away to Kello. It's been a good first season for them. Obviously, just been been stable in the third division. Garvin and Vale of Leven. I would say two big results for them. Garvin beat Les Mahego two one, and Vale of Leven beat Bells Hill one 0 Again, two sides obviously in a really good position to secure safety and wins. And Saturday would have done them no harm whatsoever. Well, Vela leaving have on a wee run, eh? Yeah. Uh, he's there. Um, he beat us 1-0 uh, earlier on there, and it's always a tough place to go, Scott. Vela leaving yeah. are always a tough team to play. Um, I, I, I didn't expect them to be down there, to be honest. 
but obviously they have been. But now they've kind of found a bit of form, probably at the right time mm-hmm. because of where we're at in the season. So uh, that's a good one for them because Belsa are doing well. They've been doing well as well. So that's a, that's a good one for them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Luger as well. Uh, they drew 1 1 away to Dorai on Saturday, then last night. Big one. They won 2 0 away to New Mains. Again, maybe just they'll, they'll need to get, they've got four games left to play. They are away to Royal Albert, away to East Kilbride Thistle, home to Bale of Lever and home to Dorai. Huge games coming up for Luger. They'll, they've had a, quite a decent spell the past couple of weeks. Obviously, they uh, won 4 3 at home to Kaluk. Uh, one three now at home at Solco it's like earlier on so they're, they're getting ones in the board but they'll they'll need to get another couple just to try and get close to safety well they're playing the teams round about them yeah. so uh, both both the teams all the teams involved there will be all thinking along the same line so mm-hmm. there'll be some uh, they're big games for for most of the teams there um, and again they'll all be trying to they'll all be trying to pick up points excuse me they'll all be trying to pick up points to, to secure um, for safety, so again, it, it's it's a tough it's a tough bottom half there. It's a tough, especially the last couple of places. So they'll all be they'll all be fighting tooth and nail to try and stay in the league. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, the get, turning our attention to the the top half of the table. Five games left for that call, Brian. Big game tomorrow night against Dorai. Obviously, Dorai will be looking to to get a, a result as well. It's going to be tight. It's going to go all the way to the 27th of May as well. You're supposed to Kelo on the final day. How big is this month going to be? Huge. But huge for all the teams involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as I said earlier on, we just, we'll just we just take it game by game. Uh, we'll not be looking at any too far ahead or anything. We'll just we'll, we'll prepare for tomorrow night's game and we'll go and we'll get our... our Self in order for it, and we'll be trying to get the three points as will do I because they they're looking they they're still wanting to um, secure their safety. So I'm expecting a very very tough game tomorrow night. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be really really interesting with the the final five games. And Brian, thank you very much for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure. I really appreciate it, and best of luck for the remainder of the season. Thanks a lot, Scott, for inviting us, and thanks very much for um thanks again, sorry for inviting me on and. We'll hopefully speak again. Thank you.